North American hunting extravaganza. It makes it sound like some grand adventure that you're never going to forget. Unfortunately for the publishers, that's just not true. I am not a hunter. I don't even like to kill spiders that I see. I just tend to scoop them up in a cup and throw them outside. That said, I can still appreciate hunting as a sport. It takes patience and experience to do it right. You can play the story mode called Hunting Season, where you can try and beat the challenges of each of the four worlds. Or if you want it, they give you an option called Quick Hunt, which open the whole game up right out of the box, with access to all the guns and levels. I wish more games gave you this option. They also give you the ability to change the weather. I'm not sure if that changed the animal's behavior since they acted so strange in every weather environment. While the animals looked really good close up, the way they moved around was ridiculous. They would literally walk around in circles just waiting for you. If you did try to take a shot at them, or if you got too close, they would scurry off a few feet and walk in circles again. And they were also very courteous to stay in their correct sub areas. While the area you were exploring was quite large, it was broken up into five or six little subsections, each with its own objective and challenges. The objectives would usually entail killing a certain number and type of animals in that area, and the challenges were basically mini games which tested your proficiency with the weapons they wanted you to use. <laughs> However, since the aim on the guns were completely broken, you would tend to fail those challenges fairly regularly. I stopped counting the number of times I had an animal in my sights and it wouldn't even register the hit, even from a couple feet away. This was a major problem when you're duck hunting. It would only read a hit when it felt like it. Even if you were extremely careful, it would still miss the target most of the time. I was so desperate to get the controls to work that I noticed that they supported the Wii Zapper, and I actually pulled my Wii Zapper out of the trash and gave it a go, and it was just as worthless as it usually was. The controls sucked even more when you tried to reload your gun. You had to mimic the actions of cocking a shotgun. Unfortunately, it didn't work either, which was a huge problem in your timed missions. I did find a way around the motion control reloading though. If you push right on the D-pad, it will change your gun, but it will also reload the new gun that you were selecting. So if you click the D-pad twice, it would reload the rifle. Sometimes the animals were a little aggressive, and they would get mad at you and charge at you, so they gave you a pistol to use to use on them. And just like the rifle, they give you unlimited ammo. And also just like the rifle, it couldn't hit anything it was aimed at. They also gave you items like binoculars and a duck call whistle to help you. You could easily toggle between them with the D-pad. Even the map and the compass would come up with the D-pad. So I applaud the good use of the D-pad. You can get more guns and different weapons to make the kills easier. Well, almost all the weapons made it easier. If you choose a compound bow, you would have a better chance of killing an animal by throwing rocks at it. It was almost completely useless. The worlds you had to walk around in were okay looking, but while they looked opening and inviting for sneaking up on animals to kill, they weren't. There were invisible walls all over the place. This game has some multiplayer games that support up to four players, and you only need one Wiimote. The games consist of killing animals or targets in a time limit. Whoever kills the most wins. North American hunting extravaganza is a good concept for a game, but has poor execution. I appreciate the fact they didn't try and make an unrealistic hunting shooter, like some other hunting games out there. However, the game is basically broken when it comes to aiming and reloading, and since that's the main brunt of the entire game, I can't recommend it. You should skip it.